man, woman, birth, death, infinity. <laughs> Good afternoon, and welcome to the Your Health Television Program here on AMP's Cable Channel 24 and on the internet at www.ampmedia.org. Join our rotating host and their informative guest live every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The purpose of the Your Health Television Program is to help get, make, and keep listeners and viewers like you healthy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with the program. Welcome back to Your Health Television Program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon, and I'm so very pleased you could join us today. I'm so pleased and lucky to have on as my first guest, Jacqueline Bird. You are an acupuncturist and herbalist here in Pacific Grove, California. Well, Jacqueline, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Jacqueline, I am going to learn a lot today. I want to know about training to become mm -hmm. an acupuncturist and herbalist mm -hmm. and I want to know what your practice is like and I want to know what's appropriate for you mm -hmm. to treat etc so why don't we start out by talking about the training to become an acupuncturist and herbalist certainly I'd be glad to an acupuncturist in the state of California is required to have had four years of medical training focusing predominantly on traditional Chinese medicine, which encompasses acupuncture, so the needles, cups, uh, twina, therapeutic massage, uh, tai chi, energetics, different things to create a complete holistic program, as well as dietetic therapy, to treat the patients in a complete manner, helping balance the body's energies. Okay, so Jacqueline, you said mm -hmm. that in California you mm -hmm. have to have a four-year mm -hmm. program of study, is that mm -hmm. right? That is correct. So that's somewhat akin to medical school for four years. That's right. It's right. the equivalent but in traditional Chinese medicine. And in the schooling these days in California, because we are primary health care providers as well in this state, we also have Western training to a more limited extent, of course, than our Western medical counterparts. Okay. So Jacqueline, mm -hmm. in the state of California, mm -hmm. and perhaps nationally, mm -hmm. Um, just not anyone can call themselves an acupuncturist or mm. herbalist. No. Yeah, not at all. So it's certainly the four-year uh, schooling within California, um, but it's also passing the California State Board license exam. So I am a licensed, therefore, acupuncturist in California. And California probably has one of the harder exams because the medicine has been here so long. Uh, nationally, the licensing is different. Uh, there are schooling and clinical requirements, of course, but a little less onerous, shall we say, a little less extensive. And there, uh, the individuals can pick which modules of Chinese medicine to focus on. Okay, so, so you have an actual license mm -hmm. issued by the state of California Correct. Mm -hmm. to be able to call yourself an acupuncturist right. and herbalist. Mm -hmm. So could we say you're a specialist in Chinese medicine? Is that correct to say? That is correct, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jacqueline, like I said, I'm going to learn a lot about this. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your practice, and mm -hmm. you have Pacific Grove Acupuncture, mm -hmm. and that's in Pacific Grove? Yes, it is, downtown Pacific Grove, right off of Lighthouse. Okay, so you're an acupuncturist and herbalist. So Correct. tell me about your practice. Mm -hmm. What's your normal day like? Certainly, um, I see between 10 and 15 patients a day, and I consult with them initially, of course, and talk about what's the primary reason they come in, and what kind of things are going on in their life. So we look at lifestyle considerations, medical ailments, of course, and usually we proceed from there to acupuncture treatment. And um, as need be, we may prescribe herbs as well for them. But the herbs are just restricted to really what's going on in that particular situation and in consideration, of course, of any Western medications they're taking. Okay, mm -hmm. Jacqueline, I I want to try to clear up some misconceptions mm -hmm. about what acupuncture is. Sure. Y you know, most people who live in the United States sort of uh, aren't sure whether it's the same as as voodoo or <laughs> where pins are being stuck into people mm -hmm. or pins are being stuck into a doll and mm -hmm. and what is this we've heard about that operations are sometimes done in China with just needles and uh -huh. acupuncture uh -huh. people don't require anesthesia but then again I see that you treat medical conditions and you treat stress and insomnia and help people stop smoking. Mm -hmm. So 
Is it possible for you to define or more clearly describe what acupuncture is? Certainly, I'd be glad to. Acupuncture is the use of sterile, very fine needles, much smaller than what you might expect getting an injection at a regular doctor's office. And these needles are inserted into various pathways, energetic pathways along the body, and very certain locations that are associated with over many thousands of years of practice in Chinese medicine associated with certain conditions, certain organs, certain therapeutic effects on the body. So depending on what the patient's coming in to see me for and some of the diagnostic tools I use, which are certainly looking at the tongue and taking pulses a little differently than our Western counterparts, I'll go ahead and put together a prescription of needles, for example, uh, on the patient's pathways. And the needles might be only four needles. It might be a little bit more than that, depending on what's going on. So I'm looking to regulate processes, balance what's called yin and yang energies of the body, and help relieve pain, uh, help regulate menses, stop smoking, things like this. Well, well Jacqueline, that's fascinating to me. Mm. Most of the audience listening mm -hmm. or, or viewing knows that I'm a plastic surgeon, mm -hmm. and of course, plastic surgeons but we take care of a lot of nerves, nerve injuries. Sure. Now, now you mentioned energy pathways, mm -hmm. and I know nerves go all over the body, mm -hmm. from the brain and the spinal cord into virtually every part of us, internal and external. Mm -hmm. Now, are those energy pathways the same as nerve pathways, or are they different? There is some overlap, but they're not always the same. So these are energetic pathways that flow through the arms, the core of the body, the legs, which nerve endings certainly do as well but there's not a hundred percent matchup between one and the other. Okay, well Jacqueline, you know, before we go further, I have to ask you about um, science-based treatment. Certainly. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very Western-based, mm -hmm. sort of Ivy League, et cetera, except when I came out to USC. Now, do we have <laughs> scientific studies demonstrating mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. what's been going on in China for thousands of years actually helps or is effective? And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I'm trying to be as clear as I can. I mean, do we have studies mm -hmm. that indicate that it helps? Yes, there are absolutely published studies from both China as well as the United States and even within Europe going uh, using the Western standards of scientific study and gold standards as much as possible to show acupuncture helps in XYZ circumstance. For example, low back pain. There's very good studies out there showing acupuncture helps with low back pain. Or you're mentioning nerve pain, the different neuralgias like carpal tunnel, for example, or trigeminal neuralgia on the face. Um, there's studies that show acupuncture can help relieve. So basically what the use of the needles does is kind of reset the uh, nerve impulse or interrupt it if there's a pain impulse traveling along the pathways of the body. Okay, so Jacqueline, you talked about energy pathways mm -hmm. that now you feel that those are very well described mm -hmm. because they've been uh, in use and described for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, is that right? Well, there's certainly that, and there's certainly published medical texts from China to that, but there's also studies, what you were mentioning a moment ago, studies uh, available online, even within the PubMed database, for example, that show, okay, here's what happens when you insert a needle into someone's body. And there's even some very interesting electro um, studies that show visual imaging, for example, of what happens when you insert a needle in someone's body and you see a pulse happening within the body. So it's actually verifiable. Okay, Jacqueline, so, sort of a, I hope it's not too mundane, but some mm -hmm. people sort of have a needle phobia. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the idea of even having blood drawn or, or, or yeah, yeah. giving mm -hmm. blood or getting anywhere near a shot mm -hmm. it really just sends them into a panic. Mm -hmm. So right. have you seen that in your practice? Like before someone would come for consultation, are they mm -hmm. anxious about the needle? Usually someone will say to me pretty quickly during a consultation, I don't like needles. And I can't say I like needles either. But mostly we're thinking about the big needles and injection shots that are typically painful. And so I'll show the patients what the Chinese needles look like. They're very, very fine, thin, disposable. And I'll let them even touch the end, and of course then we dispose of it. And it's very reassuring. And uh, if I do one needle, I say, okay, let's try one and see how you do. 
usually they don't even feel it. So they feel much better, therefore, to begin acupuncture treatment. Okay, so Jacqueline, what about the sort of other part of your practice? You're mm -hmm. not only an acupuncturist, but you're an herbalist. Mm -hmm. So tell me about treating conditions with, mm -hmm. do you say, with nutritional therapy or through herbs? What's the proper mm -hmm. term that you like to use? Um, I'll use a few terms. So I'll say with herbal therapy, first and foremost, but also dietetic therapy. And so in some cases, we can't use herbs to treat someone because they're on some Western medicines that would not be compatible with some of the Chinese herbs. So therefore, it's very important for the herbalist to know which herbs can be used in conjunction with Western supplements like fish oils even, something as simple as that, or blood thinners like Coumadin and Warfarin, for example. So what I've done is study herbs, Western herbs, for a number of years, but under my license as an acupuncturist, I've also focused many hours in herbal medicine. Okay, so, so for example, you may see someone, well, let's mm -hmm. go through a consultation. Certainly. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so let's say someone comes to you and they mm -hmm. feel like, uh, well, let's say they have low back pain. Mm -hmm. and they've been, say, cleared by their Western-trained internist or the mm -hmm. family practitioner, and mm -hmm. an operation is not indicated, but they're sort of plagued by low back pain. So how would you go about making an assessment and mm -hmm. starting them on treatment? How does Certainly. that work? So I'd ask them a variety of questions, including how long have they had the condition, no surprise there, did something cause it that they're aware of, which they may not be, but also what makes it worse, what makes it better. And there's orthopedic testing as well that I can perform to see, you know, is there a specific injury indicated, or I might even have the Western report available. But separate and apart from that, I might ask them about certain body processes. Are they better with warmth or cold? Again, this idea around what makes it worse, what makes it better, and their pulse and tongue tell me further information to say, okay, is this low back pain a matter of stagnation and injury? Is there also something deeper that's affecting their low back causing pain, somewhere around kidney energetics, for example? Well, um, Jacqueline, a few times you've mentioned pulses mm -hmm. and that you look at the tongue in a different way mm -hmm. that perhaps a Western trained medical doctor would look. Right. Tell me more about checking someone's pulses. Certainly, okay. So in the pulses, on I check uh, both wrists, for example, and I have three positions to check on each side of the body. Those positions are associated with organs in the body, such as heart, liver, lung, and kidneys, things like that. And so the quality of a pulse, besides its speed, of course, I can check that as well. But the quality of someone's pulse tells me what's going on internally. Is there dampness? Is there some heat going on? Is there a blood pressure issue going on by the feel of the pulse? So you feel that by a different type of inspection, mm -hmm. checking people's pulses, looking right. at their tongue, exactly. that you can get some idea about what's going on with their systemic mm -hmm. workings, for example? Absolutely. It gives me a real complete picture of oh. their body. Okay, so let's go back to the person, for example, with low back pain. Sure. So at what point might you say, let's do some needles, or mm -hmm. when would you say, let's look at your diet, or let's look at your weight, and what about herbs, et cetera? How do you mm -hmm. go about that? Certainly. So for, first and foremost, patients are interested in getting relief for their back pain. So in many cases, I might get to the acupuncture treatment fairly quickly. At the same time, I might, as I'm putting in the needles, ask some questions about their diet to see if they're doing something that's promoting that feeling of pain in the low back or not doing enough to help enervate them, energize them, and strengthen them. So quite a few people, interestingly enough, have a diet that's very cold, for example, energetically, or a lot of yogurts, ice creams, things like this, cold salads, uncooked vegetables. That kind of cold intake, dietary intake, can affect the feeling in their low back, in their kidney energetics, and the feeling among their bones. So it's very important to know what their diet's about. So I may recommend, okay, let's look at some warming foods. Let's look at cinnamon on your apple or in your oatmeal, for example, ginger, to help warm the body internally and dissipate some of that cold in the low back. Well, that's fascinating to me. Um, Jacqueline, what about I see on, on the list of 
conditions that you might treat, migraine mm -hmm. headaches. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you might go about uh, assessing the, or making up a treatment plan for someone with migraines, uh, which also, uh, I, it, a, a nice segue, I think, mm -hmm. what about people who are also being treated by their internist or family mm -hmm. practitioner or neurologist for something like migraines mm -hmm. and they come to you to see if there's some adjunctive treatment? Is that a reasonable question or something we Absolutely. can talk about? Absolutely. It would be a very good complementary treatment to Western medicine because it's super important with these type of problems and migraines and certain types of headache to consult with the Western physician. So I certainly would want to know about what their current therapies are and the treatment for migraines is extremely effective and a little bit amazing. For example, I had uh, one lady come in just starting a headache, migraine occurrence with the flashing lights, noise bothering her, nausea, things like this, very dizzy. And so I had her lay down and darken the room a little bit, enough still to see what I'm doing, of course, and then we began the treatment with needles. And the idea was to bring down some of that excessive energy in the head and stop the occurrence of the migraine. And I did use also scalp acupuncture, which is effective for not only migraines, but also stroke patients, for example, things like this. And so um, this particular lady was very effectively uh, treated. Migraine stopped. I let her rest for a while with the needles and sent her home because, of course, once you've had a migraine hit, then it's debilitating. Even if the pain stopped, the patient needs to recover. Well, Jacqueline, that's fascinating. Now, we only have about a minute and a half left or mm -hmm. a minute. Now, I want to make sure that I give out your phone number, mm -hmm. and I think you have a website, right? Yes. So you are Jacqueline Bird, mm -hmm. B-Y-R-D, and you're here in Pacific Grove. Yes. Your number is 831-393-4876. Mm -hmm. that correct? 393-4876. And your website is pacificgroveacupuncture.com. So that's one word, mm -hmm. one word, pacificgroveacupuncture.com. Mm -hmm. Well, in about the 45 seconds we have left, I have another question. Mm -hmm. As a plastic surgeon, I've heard that some people feel that mm -hmm. acupuncture mm -hmm. can possibly Im help a person to improve the way they look. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I mean, without without surgery or without laser, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. In certain circumstances, certainly not wholesale across the board. So acupuncture is helpful with appearance in terms of bringing fresh energy to the face, for example, fresh blood flow to the face, relaxing the facial muscles. For example, with TMJ, there's a lot of tension and muscular spasm in the jaw. Or with Bell's palsy, uh, a patient's face can droop on one side or even post-stroke. If one has access to the patient soon enough and treats them with acupuncture, you can begin to rectify the situation. Well, Jacqueline, I'm mm -hmm. in favor of anything that can reduce stress and mm -hmm. simultaneous, simultaneously improve appearance and health and good feeling. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline Bird, acupuncturist and herbalist. You're here in Pacific Grove. Thanks mm -hmm. so very much for coming on the program. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Thank you. This is Your Health television program. I am Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon. We're going to take a very brief pause for a very good cause. We're coming right back.